Welcome back! Looks like we managed to get rid of at least some of the force fields. Can we scan this console now? This is a computer control panel, Captain. It appears to have some control over other parts of the compound. Can we use it? This console is non-operational, Captain. However, I do believe the repair would be a simple matter given the right materials. There are essentially no controls or displays available at this time. Hmm, it looks like some of the stuff we found might be able to... ...repair that. But I kind of want to look around more before we start messing with uh, equipment here. Curious to see if the force fields in the room we came in at are also gone. And it seems they are. Which means we can now scan this stuff. It is a powerful transmitter, unlike anything in Starfleet records. It appears to be a detection device. Judging by the complexity of its circuitry, I would gather that it is quite sensitive. It is a scanner with both long-range and detailed capabilities. It is the thing that scanned us when we beamed in. I guess it is also the thing that scanned the Demeter. Can we use any of this equipment? I am fairly certain it is a transmitter of some type, Captain. While the construction and circuitry are totally unfamiliar to me, I do notice a lack of signal focusing or the ability to go omnidirectional or any other similar change. However, the system is slaved to track to a general sector of the galaxy. Information is passed following a random signal pattern with the lead pulse carrying the coding keys. English spot, please. That was English, Captain. To rephrase, the signal is permanently directed to one area of the galaxy, an area I believe the Federation has yet to explore. The signal beam is not tight enough to fix an exact planet or even a specific system. These settings cannot be changed. Then this is a sort of monitoring system only? Quite possibly. Furthermore, the signal frequency is 0. .00052 angstroms, and the transmissions are coded. Captain, unless someone was looking for this signal in particular, chances are it would be dismissed as background radiation, cosmic rays. You learned all that by just playing with the console on a machine you've never seen before? I am the science officer, Doctor, and a Vulcan. Indeed. Interesting. It seems that this is meant to signal somebody of something, but who and of what, I don't know. A sensor device, quite sensitive. This system detected the geological scan from the Demeter. Chances are good that it had already detected the Demeter's presence. Then why not scan the Demeter immediately? That would have certainly alerted the ship to the presence of this equipment. Whatever or whoever controls this waited until its detection had already occurred. Interesting. So you need to find it first, and then they'll scan you back. As I assumed earlier, this is a scanning device. The architecture is quite interesting and quite elegant. Captain, whoever constructed this is probably more technologically advanced than we are. And taller. Look at how high the console is. Good observation, Bones. Thank you, Jim. But not necessarily correct. It is logical to assume they do work at a higher level, however. Are you trying to say their hands come out of their heads, Spock? I am not assuming they have hands, Doctor. A bit uh, nitpicky, Spock, but true. These aliens do not need to be humanoid at all, after all. Although this is original series Star Trek, so... They probably are. Nothing we can do with any of the equipment in this room, however. Now, we haven't checked this 
door yet, so let's do that now. Interesting. Smooth rock and tight connections everywhere. There is another symbol on the floor, but it doesn't look like you can look at it. Nothing on the ceiling to match it this time. A group of tubes and cube-like devices that seem to be processing something. A huge vat full of pheromone and food-producing bacteria. Interesting. What is all this for? This device will propel a large quantity of bacteria into the planet's ecosystem. Um, depending on what this is, that could be a good thing or a very bad thing. An orb and disk configured device hangs from the ceiling. An orb and disk configured device hangs from the ceiling. No idea what that is. There are indeed four lights. Not five, four. Captain Kirk feels angry at his crew for letting him down, and he's not sure why. McCoy is getting tired of Spock's know-it-all attitudes, even if Spock does know everything. He kinda does. Spock is quite pleased his emotional control hides the fact that he is considerably superior to the other two in every way. I don't think Spock would normally feel that way. Bo, Spock, no arguing. I want to find out what's going on and find out now. They do seem to be arguing even more than usual. This room gives me the willies, Jim. Most impressive pieces of technology. Scanning time. Nothing unusual about that object, Captain. Readings indicate that these units are processing waste products into inert compounds. Okay. Waste processors, not too interesting to us, I guess. Fascinating. This device siphons material from the other unit by way of the pipe overhead. It possesses the ability to move a substantial amount of material. Most interesting is that the material can be jettisoned up out of these caves into the ecosystem of the planet. It may be that the material in the vat is dangerous, and the builders wished to protect this complex from contamination. But they didn't care about the planet, did they? Apparently not the primary concern. Tell that to the Balcosi. According to the studies from the Demeter, the Balcosi would not recognize speech. I believe Bones was speaking figuratively, Spock. There is presently no means by which to shut off this release. The unit is set to discharge, and the control switch has been removed. Removed? Could it be the builders were not afraid the complex would be contaminated, but were instead afraid the ecosystem would be in trouble if the contents of the vat were not discharged? Interesting hypothesis, Captain. Difficult to do more than speculate at this time. It's possible that all of this was built before the Belkosi were here, in which case the builders may not have cared if the planet was not inhabited. Wait, didn't we also see somewhere that the Belkosi had been here a very short amount of time for their level of development? That's also very interesting. A discharge unit set to eject material siphoned through ceiling pipes into the planet's ecosystem. No telling what is in the vat. Maybe the medical tricorder will be more use there. A high protein bacteria mixed with some sort of pheromone style compound. I don't know what effects the pheromone would have on our physiology. I would need to take a sample back to the lab on the Enterprise to conduct a study. Yeah, I don't think that's happening. Captain, this is the life support control unit. 
Okay, probably don't turn that off then. Can we do anything with these things? A discharge unit set to eject material siphoned through ceiling pipes into the planet's ecosystem. Doesn't seem like it. How about this? Captain, the controls are locked out. There is no way to change their settings. Okay, well, that's not very helpful then. Um, well, this can't be switched off. But we did pick up a switch earlier. However, I still think we need more information before we start messing with things. Let's go this way. Interesting looking room. Although the equipment is alien, nothing appears out of the ordinary in this medical examination room. A medical examination room? Finally! Bones will be happy. No pattern on the floor here. Another cone in the ceiling, but we can't look at it. In the back of the room sits medical diagnostic equipment. It appears idle. A medical examination station. It appears to be sized for Balcozzi. Okay, so much for the theory that this place was built before the Balcozzi were here. Which means that the stuff in the tank is either harmless to the Balcozzi, or the people did not care about the Balcozzi at all, or they were deliberately trying to harm them. Either way, probably not uh, great. Well, if it's harmless, I guess. Spock muses whether or not the medical facilities here will keep McCoy busy. Kirk thinks a nap on the couch might do him some good. This is no time for napping. McCoy feels bad about wondering if Mr. Spock's brain will come out easier the second time around. Um, I wouldn't reference that episode if I were you. That episode was not good, as I recall. Feeling better, Bones? You should feel almost at home, Doctor. Fine. Something I can deal with. Indeed. Let's see if we can find out anything more about this equipment here. Captain, given the nature of the electronics inside, I can deduce that it is a synthesizer replicator unit. However, it is unlike anything used by the Federation. I am unable to determine its exact capabilities. Medical Diagnostic and Treatment Unit, set for alien physiology. I don't think there's anything we could do with this right now. Now this is more like it, a medical examination table. I'd know one of these even if it is made for an alien. Jim, I'm picking up traces of cells from a Balkosian. There are also traces of some designer cells. It looks like someone is playing a dangerous game with the Balkosi. Oh, genetic manipulation. Now that is interesting. kind of uh, calls back to the first episode. After all, the uh, Vardane seem to be heavily into eugenics as well. Although I don't think it is related at all. Anyway, nothing else here, so let's move on. Okay. Some circles on the floor this time. Even with the doorway leading out, the air seems thick and the room feels confining. It looks like a bunch of grapes. <laughs> I guess. This device appears to be of the same manufacture as the others in this complex. A small door leading to the planet's surface. To the surface? Um. Looks like a Balkosian described by the data files from the Demeter. Um, he's, he's eating. I think he's eating. Is that normal? He's done. Okay. 
That... That just raises a whole bunch of new questions, doesn't it? Oh, looks like this is gonna keep happening. Kirk is starting to feel downright hostile. What are you looking at? Spock stares back. Interesting. Well, maybe we'll see about Kosi in here. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> okay. They look peaceful enough, Jim. We should be able to gain valuable data studying the Balcosi. Does anything um, change about the readings on of the crew, I wonder? Hmm. You seem help. Nope, just still slightly elevated. Just curious about that. Internal structure hidden by force field effects. The uncovered areas consist of a pair of unknown vents and a solid inclined drop chute. Dropping the food, I guess. The cavernous structure narrows considerably, approximately 15 meters ahead, Captain. We would not be able to get past that point. Guess the Belkosi fit, but we do not. Although the doorway does lead up to the surface, there is little air exchange with the surface. Interesting. Can we look at the actual food that this thing drops? A small brick of food, all the best of hospital, airline, and cafeteria food, was filtered out. This is what's left. Wow, that must be particularly horrible. The Valkosian system shows heightened stress and metabolic activities. The Rock creature in. looks at you quizzically and gibbers for a moment. It'd be nice to be able to examine them in more detail. I kind of want to see if I can scan the food. I'm just a simple country doctor, not a magician. There are some things I just can't fix. Maybe um, we can take this guy to the, uh, the examination room we just saw. For that, we need him incapacitated. I think phasers might be a bit overkill there, though, but Spock could help. Captain, I will attempt to restrain the Balkosian when he stops to eat. I wonder what that puff of gas is about. The nerve bundle seemed quite thick. My assumption is that the Balkosian is unharmed, but will remain unconscious for a considerable time. This device appears to be of the... Nothing specific about the place where the, guff, the puff of gas came out, I think. Internal structure hit... No. Even though unconscious, the Balkosian system is still operating at a much higher than normal rate. Alright, let's get him to uh, the medical examination room. Spock's the strongest, so he can do the carrying. You heartless monster, leave him alone. You heartless monster, leave uh, him alone. I guess, I guess not. Jim, I'd like to take him to the medical examination room next door. I want to know what that gas is doing to him. Not a bad idea, Bob. All right. He's on the table. This seems pointless. Let's examine him. This is more like it—a medical examination table. I'd know one of these even if it is made for an alien. Um, that's not what I intended to happen. I guess we just need to tricorder again. Oh God, look at these readings. Everything's elevated. Small wonder that the Balcosi are in turmoil. Every aggression-related hormone in this guy's body is working overtime. What's causing it, Bones? That little hiss of air was loaded with pheromones, Jim. The creature inhaled them and immediately went into overload. This must happen at random intervals when they collect the food. 
I hate to sound like Spock, but there's more, and it's pretty fascinating, also horrifying. The pheromone is perfectly tuned to the Balcosian physiology. It's like somebody genetically engineered both. Didn't the Demeter report say there weren't enough records showing the Balcosian presence on the planet? Could they have been put here on purpose? It is possible we have stumbled in on an experiment, Captain. With the subjects being treated like rats, it's criminal, Jim. These are, can be, thinking beings. I'm not certain it is the Balcosi that are the subjects, Bone. I think it is us. Interesting hypothesis, Captain. What is your supporting data? It's the way all of this is set up, Spock. I can't put my finger on it, but it just feels so, so set up. We keep finding out just enough to make choices. The real question is who? Who's doing this to us? And to what purpose, Captain? Why? Why indeed, Spock. Why indeed. It does seem very um, deliberate. Definitely possible that they are testing us. Um, I I don't think we can uh, do anything else with the Belkosi. We can't even revive him. Or return him. I guess we'll just have to find his own way out when he comes to. This isn't a medical matter, Jim. It kind of is, but sure. Um, there's another door here. I don't think we can leave this way. That passageway narrows as it goes up. I don't think we'd make it without getting stuck. Nope. Where does this go? Oh, back here. Interesting. So I guess this is the gas that he was being sprayed with, which is also being pumped into the atmosphere, and it sounds like it is uh, not good for them, so we should probably find a way to switch this off. A huge vat full of pheromone and food-producing bacteria. They don't say anything else about it now, this do they? Room gives me the willies, Jim. They don't. Uh, we need a way to turn this off, and we found a switch, so... Assuming the appropriate signal is received, this unit can be shut down safely. The shutdown signal does not originate here. Yeah, so now it can be switched off, but not from here. A discharge unit set. No, nothing else. So I guess we need to find a different way of dealing with that. This console was useless. Maybe the console here can be used, although Xbox said it was without a display. I guess this view screen is unrelated. Uh, but we have a display, so... The computer is now functional. Fascinating. There's only a limited amount of control available on this console. I believe there are other functions it controls, but these functions cannot be accessed. I'm not sure I understand, Spock. Nor I, Captain. What purpose would be served by limiting access? What purpose indeed? Bones, any ideas? Why are you asking me? Is this some kind of pop quiz? Two other things, Captain. There is a reference in the limited readout which leads me to believe there are other complexes on the planet somehow connected with this one. Location and function are not specified or available. That's only one, Spock. True, Captain. I was just waiting to see if you had any comments. Not that I'd like to share at this moment, Mr. Spock, please. There is one other repair that is possible. One device can be controlled from this console if its command circuit is replaced. I will not be able to determine what device that is until the replacement circuit is installed. Interesting. I think that would be either one of these two. No, I don't think that's necessary. 
I guess the other one then. This box of control circuitry. Let's see what happens. I can shut down the force field protecting the generator. Do you wish me to do so? No, let's look around a bit more first. I guess that's the one remaining force field that we saw. Yes, we'll finally be able to take a better look at it. We don't have anything else to do right now, so let's do that. Captain, my attempt to turn off the force field has triggered some sort of computer activity. It is requesting that I allow some sort of display to occur on the screen. Shall I allow it? I don't know if that's a good idea. Let's wait. By all means, Spock. Curiosity may kill cats, but I'm hoping humans will fare a little better. I don't know if that... By all means... That's comforting, Jim. Very. Oh, okay. Looks like we have a grid with a bunch of shapes, and we are being asked to choose another shape. Probably completing some kind of pattern. There's no real indication as to what you are supposed to do here. However, if you get it wrong, you're actually giving given uh, kind of a hint. It seems that we have chosen incorrectly, Captain. What's the matter, Jim? Been that long since childhood? We used to play this kind of game all the time. No, Bones, it hasn't been that long. I just haven't seen a puzzle quite like this one. I must confess a lack of familiarity with this particular scheme. Vulcan puzzles are more abstract. There were four available shapes that might solve the puzzle. One of the shapes should make all three lines equal in some way. That would seem logical, Captain. Indeed, and we get to try it again, and this does not cost you any points if you get it wrong once. Captain, there is another display waiting to be activated. Shall I continue? No, that last puzzle gave me a headache. Absolutely. I'm sure we'll do better this time. Do we have to, Jim? I hate test. Activating. It is not the same puzzle. But as um, Spock indicated, we probably have to make the three lines equal somehow. It's, it's only the lines that you're interested in. The uh, columns do not matter. And what you need to look at is actually the uh, number of sides. Uh, this thing has six sides. This thing has three. And a circle counts as one. So this line adds up to ten. And this has uh, five sides, and one, and four, also makes ten. But this is three, and four makes seven. So in order to make this also make ten, we have to uh, add another three. You could have done the same thing with the uh, first puzzle, if you figured out how it worked, or uh, the solution there was the diamond, I think, or if you picked it by accident. Uh, but I just wanted to show you that you do get a little hint when you get it wrong the first time. It appears we have chosen correctly, Captain. The controls indicate that the force field has been dropped. Alright, let's see if it is the force field we thought it was. I'm gonna save, save here. New game. Replace previous. Just in case. All right, we have the um, device uncovered now. Captain, this appears to be a mass storage device. The tricorder cannot tell what information it holds. The energy generated from inside this unit is definitely causing the problems in communicating with the Enterprise. It will undoubtedly block any attempt at transporter lock-on also. I guess we need to try and shut it down then. This generator may be providing power for more than just this complex. It is broadcasting power 
which is causing the interference in communications with the Enterprise. I cannot tell for certain if there are receiving units for this power, because some of the readout circuits are damaged. Fascinating. What is fascinating this time, Spock? I doubt it's fascinating to either Bones or myself, but I'm sure that won't stop you from telling us. What is fascinating this time, Spock? You tell him, Jim, I'm getting sick of this alien smarter than thou attitude. If either of you had an ounce of logic, you would be more prepared to listen to my information and possibly even understand it. Bordering on insubordination, aren't we, Mr. Smart? I always knew that no emotion garbage was just to cover. He thinks he should be in charge. Mr. Spock, I'll have those findings from you right now. Captain, it appears the circuit was deliberately damaged. This would only be possible if the force field were down. Who would damage their own machinery? And for what purpose? More and more curious, Mr. Spock. Also, Captain, I am able to determine that if power is interrupted rather than shut down from this console, it will send a signal to that effect. The signal will trigger some other event. I do not know what the event will be. It definitely seems to me like um, our trio is being affected by the gas as well, that's why they seem so agitated. And the fact that this was apparently deliberately damaged seems to support Kirk's conclusion that we are being tested. Or experimented on. Captain, there's a small display active. It appears that this device is a memory unit, an archive. Most amazing. The information is in volatile memory. If power were lost to this device, all information contained within would be lost. An odd way to create an archive. What is in the archive? The displays indicate it contains a vast amount of data on three-dimensional projection. Circuitry diagrams, equipment construction techniques. Essentially, everything needed to project lifelike images in great detail inside of a structure. Starfleet does not have this level of technology. This would be a major find for the Federation. Then I think that gathering that data would be a very good thing to do, Mr. Spock. Very well, Captain. Captain, the display indicates that the best view of the projection will be from the south side of the room. Well, gentlemen? Anyone got popcorn? Bones. Um, that seems to be, uh, McCoy. That's Kirk. And, uh, not unexpectedly, Spock. Impressive, Spock. Captain, I'm not responsible for that occurrence. However, I did discover that accessing the memory will not only trigger the shutdown of this unit, it will also send a signal to another device, most likely one somewhere in this complex. Damaging the unit will also initiate shutdown and signal transmission. There's no way around it? None, Captain. What is this, some kind of idiotic test? Don't fool with that, Spock. You'll poison this planet and make these inhabitants permanently aggressive. Doctor, you do not know for certain that whoever placed the Balcozi here did not intend for that to happen. The aggressiveness may be what they need to develop further. And the information in the archive is a reward for sending the Balcozi into the next stage of their development. You just want to get your Vulcan fingers on that precious scientific information. More like 30 pieces of silver for condemning the Balkosi to the lives of violence. Jim, you can't let this unfeeling monster do this to the Balkosi. Do you wish me to continue attempting to access the archive, Captain? Yes, Buck. That information could be critical to the Federation. Let's hold off until we get a little more information. Yes, Buck. Let's hold off until we get a little more information. I kind of agree with McCoy here. That gas does not seem to be doing the Bonkosi any favors, so releasing it into the atmosphere in large amounts is something we should avoid even if it does mean losing this uh, information. Maybe we can find a way around this. After all, we saw that the uh, pillar was damaged, but um, I guess we will see if we can 
retrieve this information without downing the Balcosi in the next video.